So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the session one for the keynote lecture. Keynote lecture for the session one will be given by Professor K. Srinivas Reddy from IIT Madras. He'll be talking on integrated renewable energy technologies with energy storage for standalone power generation. So let me just uh, introduce uh, Professor Reddy. Professor Reddy is uh, very well known in actually renewable energy area in India and abroad. Professor Reddy uh, obtained his PhD from IIT Delhi in energy studies in 1999. Then he joined NIT Warangal for a small stint for four years. Uh, he was there. And then he joined NIT Madras uh, at 2000, uh, in 2003. And Professor Reddy <clears throat> is currently professor at IIT Madras and also honorary professor at University of Exeter, UK. He also served as adjunct professor in SERI CSIR, which is in Chennai from 2014-2017. Professor Reddy is fellow of National Academy of Engineering and fellow of Pulse Society of Sustainable Energy Technologies. He is specialist in renewable energy and he's having actually many publications and patents in this uh, renewable energy areas. He is very highly cited, actually, a researcher. He's having more than 6,000 citations. Uh, Professor Reddy is he has completed uh, and doing many uh, funding projects or like I mean they are funded uh, within India and abroad like um, DST CSR then uh, UKRI ICI Impact and EPSRC like there's many and <clears throat> Dr Reddy received awards uh, uh, such as uh, WSCT Innovation Award and Make Career Level uh, Institute uh, and uh, Development Award, JC Bose uh, Patent Award, uh, Magalakshmi Hangar Awards, like this many. He won Career Award for Young Teachers from EICT in 2003. He served as a member of Board of Governors for IIT Sirupati uh, from 2018 to 2021. Oh, I just invite uh, uh, Professor Reddy uh, to proceed with his uh, talk. Now, floor is yours, Professor Reddy. Thank you very much uh, for your nice introduction. Can you hear me now? Is... Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. So I'll uh, give my talk. Uh, so I'll share the screen. And... Oh, can you see the screen? Yeah, we can see. Full screen? Can see full screen? Yeah, fine. Okay. So, good morning to everyone. And uh, the talk is uh, on integrated renewable energy technologies with energy storage, but standalone power generation. So, as you know very well, uh, the renewable energy technologies and mainly solar and other renewables like biomass, wind. So when we use these technologies mainly for standalone power generation where rural and remote areas, uh, it is important to make them more reliable. So because of uh, the intermittency in the nature of uh, the energy source, uh, it is available only a particular time. So therefore, uh, supplying the energy to rural areas on a standalone mode, mode is uh, very challenging. So therefore, it's important to have energy storage. So I'm going to give some, uh, some solutions, mainly for uh, energy storage, as well as uh, integration of renewable energy in this talk. And uh, they are essentially technology development uh, 
then the indigenous technology development uh, of our activities at IIT Madras. So storage is an important solution for renewable energy. Generally, if you look at uh, the renewable energy technology that took solar energy technologies, uh, uh, the solar energy systems, uh, solar energy systems convert uh, solar energy into heat and that heat uh, can be supplied to a heat engine, which is a power cycle. And of course it produces electricity and which can be used either grid connected or standalone. So uh, when it is grid connected, grid integration, power parity and uh, grid parity, load management are major issues. But if, you, if it works on a standalone mode, then the load side dispatching is a major issue. So in such case, uh, the energy storage plays a major role or otherwise we have to integrate with other renewable energy sources. Uh, in this uh, talk, I'm going to emphasize how these are integrated. And apart from that, uh, we, think we have a direct energy conversion from solar to uh, electrical energy by photovoltaic collectors. But here, uh, the, it's the same, it's a direct energy conversion, unlike uh, the heat engine based energy conversion. Here also we need storage in order to improve the reliability and also auxiliary source. The difference between these two is uh, uh, here it's an electrical energy storage, whereas here it's a thermal energy storage. So I'm going to give uh, these uh, options how we can store uh, energy and integrate with the renewable energy technologies in this talk. So uh, as uh, part of uh, this uh, our activities at IIT Madras, we are working on uh, concentrating solar power, then the thermal and uh, photovoltaics, and uh, the energy storage, and uh, of course the associated uh, transformation of energies in terms of uh, cogeneration, dry generation activities, desalination, and other activities. And uh, materials is also one of the important uh, for renewable energy technology. So. Uh, we are also working on uh, energy materials, uh, mainly uh, storage materials and uh, of course uh, characterization of these materials uh, to identify uh, the appropriate materials either in terms of the cost, low cost materials or uh, high uh, energy efficient materials. And then uh, um, in order to implement these renewable energy systems, uh, at any given location, we need to know the resources. So these resources can be estimated either statistical or uh, uh, real time. But uh, so some of the tools, advanced tools are used to assess the solar energy sources and renewable energy sources. Uh, as more, the solar energy integration with other uh, renewables is an important aspect. So as a part of uh, our activity, we have developed and demonstrated a system, integrated renewable energy system, which uh, integrates solar and biomass. And uh, what we coin is a biomass, bio CTV. Biomass is integrated with solar and in a sustainable energy uh, supply mode and to a rural communities especially in a standard run conditions. And uh, in this, uh, eventually we need to um, come up with a various uh, other products like water, we have to look at the healthcare and uh, the illumination, communications, and uh, of course, uh, integration with uh, uh, local employment as well as the uh, education, mainly supplying this energy to the both healthcare centers as well as the schools and other uh, local requirements in a, an integrated fashion because their load profiles are different. So we insta implemented this uh, project in uh, West Bengal, uh, Vishwabharati University, close to Vishwabharati University, a tribal village. Uh, that's, yeah. um, so this is a geographical location and the essential technologies involved here solar and uh, technologies and uh, biomass. 
as well as uh, hydrogen production for uh, energy storage uh, when the, there's an excess energy. Here, uh, biomass is converted into um, biogas. And if you look at the concept is solar is converted into electrical energy and uh, supply to this village. And uh, uh, parallel to that, the biogas, biomass, which is locally available, converted into biogas and supplied to uh, the generator, which in turn produces electricity. This is an integrated uh, mode. Here, the storage is uh, one part in biogas part and the energy battery side, and of course, electrolyzing part. If you look at the architecture of this uh, system, this in this mode, we have ultimately we need to supply this electricity cooking gas and the water. And it operates in an integrated fashion, though both storage mode uh, and uh, uh, integration mode. And it's a complex system. I'm not going to uh, detail, but these are the, some of the energy uh, vectors where we can see how they, it operates. And uh, the biogas is supplied by five kilowatts. It's, uh, the village uh, uh, is about 60 huts and uh, 60 houses and uh, a school and uh, health center, all these energy needs are catered by this integrated uh, system. And then you can see that it uh, operates in this mode, a uh, solar system. Uh, whenever it uh, uh, solar system produces electricity stored in battery here, and then converted with the proper uh, uh, ACDC conversion and control system, this is the village, uh, which is about uh, 60 households. And uh, this is uh, in a, a standalone mode supplied standard mode, it's operated with a biogas digester and all this. You can see that here. And apart from that, whenever there's excess energy that is used to produce hydrogen through an electrolyzer, and that hydrogen is used to enrich the biogas here. You can see this, and but because this is a small fraction, which is used here. And this, uh, uh, the flow chart of this entire system is this. And it is implemented in, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, close to Vishwabharati University, uh, Shantani Ketan. And these are the two biogas uh, digesters, and the solar energy system is here, and some solar panels are here. And if you look, at the village is at the back side of this here. And uh, it's a, a kind of contributory mode. And uh, the, of course, after the demonstration, we have uh, transferred this to a, an NGO. They will take care of uh, this operation logistics there. And if you look at inside this building, uh, this is the, di the biogas comes uh, from here and with a large autonomy of three days. And this biogas is supplied to the generator and which produce electricity. Uh, and then that is stored in the batteries. And uh, this is the control panel, which uh, controls both uh, PV and uh, uh, biogas um, electricity and storage. This uh, system will take care of that. Uh, and in fact, before doing that, we have developed this at uh, IIT Madras. Uh, uh, these are the panels which are located on, a, on our lab, on the top of our lab, the CRC, and the biogas is brought in uh, these bags. And this is a control panel, and the generator is this. This operates in this mode. Here, uh, development of uh, a control system is a, a very challenging, and also storage. And of course, uh, solar generation. I'm going to discuss how the uh, solar energy is stored in, uh, in especially in CSP operation, uh, concentrating solar power technologies. And if you look at the storage part and how grid acts and convention generation storage facilities, how they are integrated in this mode, depending upon the uh, RE fraction, if renewable energy fraction is 20%, 80%, how uh, we can make it more flexible as far as the component is concerned. Then this uh, is an architecture to uh, evolve 100% renewable. So the storage plays a major role, power to heat or pump storage or any other energy storage, mainly thermal energy storage and so on. There are wide storage options here, um, but of course they need to be cost competitive or viable options. Now, depending upon this, I'm uh, here. We can look at all various options. You know, uh, depending upon the cost versus uh, the type of uh, uh, intervention, you know, this storage intervention and 
transmission, load management, system operations and services uh, from uh, variable renewable energy systems and so on. So if you look at uh, concentrating solar power uh, is similar to that of the coal-based power plants. Here, uh, if you see that uh, a coal-based power plant operates on uh, heat engine, uh, ranking cycle, and uh, the heat is supplied by coal, by burning of coal. But if you replace this burn coal by sun, then it becomes concentrated solar power. And uh, this solar energy conversion into high temperature heat is a, a very challenging and also involves uh, uh, complex processes. Here, mainly because it involves high temperature heat, so there are heat losses and irreversibility plays a major role. How do we convert this uh, is an important issue. Then this, there are several technologies, solar technologies, which converts solar energy into heat. And I have listed out these four technologies, uh, which have reached the stage of maturity and commercialization level, parabolic trough, parabolic dish, linear tunnel reflector, and power tower. At IED Madras, we are working on all four technologies at a commercial level. And if you classify these CSP technologies, uh, 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 one is uh, high temperature and low temperature options. And if you look, classify them, a medium temperature is about 100 to 400 degrees Celsius, and uh, high temperature is uh, more than 400 degrees Celsius. And uh, these technologies, uh, as our approach is a, a 4D approach, design, development, demonstration, and deployment. And of course, um, I put them as a R4DC research, design, development, demonstration, and deployment, uh, and commercialization also. Some of our uh, industrial associates have commercialized our technologies. And this is a typical our uh, technologies which we develop at IBM address. So you can see the parabolic dish, um, PV systems, and parabolic trough collectors, and concentrating photovoltaics. Uh, with uh, desalination integration and some measurement systems and so on. And I have given the capacities of individual things and their performances. You know. And as I mentioned that they are at the demonstration score, uh, scale, I, uh, we work on the 4D through 4D and uh, with uh, 4T uh, approach, 4D, 4T, 4E, 4T, or uh, the vice versa, 4D is, uh, as I mentioned, the design, development, demonstration, deployment. 4 e is energy, exergy, uh, environment, and economic analysis. And uh, 4 T is a table uh, test tube to tabletop to technology development. So therefore, ultimately, most of our uh, systems that are uh, in our lab is a demonstration scale, so they can be easily taken to the field and implemented and demonstrated and deployed. So therefore. Uh, we have already licensed some of these technologies to industries, they can take it. This is another view. But what I mean to say is if you look at most of them are uh, uh, large-scale systems in laboratory. So therefore, uh, they can be taken uh, to that. And I'll give you quickly these technologies and how the storage uh, systems are playing an important role in supplying the reliable uh, energy. So this is a parabolic trough uh, system which concentrates solar energy into heat on a line focus collector here. And if uh, sun is here and then it reflects here. So the concentrated energy is focused onto this receiver. And when you circulate the fluid from one end and you'll get the uh, uh, heated fluid on the other end, it can, if it is a oil, it's a hot oil. If it is a water, you'll get steam out of them. And um, see the complete development from uh, uh, concept to technology level, uh, you can see that they are uh, connected in series parallel with the appropriate uh, working fluids and so on. So essentially, this is a, any solar concentrating system is uh, essentially an optical thermal structural component. Uh, it's an optical component by uh, we need to study optics, we need to study therm heat, thermal aspects. Also, because they are outdoor units, so they we need to study the structural aspects also. So first, uh, we have uh, we do comprehensive analysis of uh, optical, thermal, and structural analysis. This is an optical analysis, how the 
sun's ray is coming onto the surface and how it is getting reflected, how it is getting reflected, how it is distributed, and how it is transformed into heat. And when they put into the open field, how structurally they are stable or unstable. And we developed receivers in order to capture this concentrated solar energy and convert into heat. And uh, uh, there are several receiver options, uh, mainly uh, for, uh, for operating both water as well as the thermic fluids. And this is an experimental uh, investigation. We developed a porous receiver, and they are published in these papers if you are interested in them. Here, uh, why we go for water and oil? And if you look at that, this is a solar collector field. It converts uh, solar energy into heat, and then when you supply it to the uh, heat engine, Rankine cycle, uh, then it produces power. But if you look at uh, here, uh, this uh, essentially the solar field is a boiler. In that boiler, how do we supply heat is an important thing. Whether uh, we use uh, oil, thermic fluid, and supply that, or uh, uh, if you do that way, what happens is the entire boiler is operated at low pressure because the solar field is massive and it is uh, spanning several acres of land. So therefore, uh, keeping the high pressure fluid is very uh, risky. So therefore, we can operate at low, low pressure condition with the oil and we can also integrate axillary uh, fuel. Uh, but what happens is there is a double conversion. This is the first loop and this is the second loop and first loop to second loop, the heat supply will uh, uh, involve some irreversibilities and losses. So therefore, there's a poor heat transfer characteristics, thermal degradation, uh, operating temperature problems, and of course, we need, needs additional heat exchanger, which is an expensive. In contrast that, if you remove this part and then use directly like that, then it's called direct steam generation, where uh, this water, single fluid is used to end to end. So eventually the entire uh, um, boiler is an open environment as a uh, solar collector field. It's an advantage of uh, di direct conversion so that the heat exchanger is eliminated and the performance is better. But the operating this in an open environment with high pressure conditions is a very challenging and two-phase flow. Um, a stratified flow is a major issue. Thermal instability is an issue. And displacement of receiver from the focal uh, plane is another issue. So then this uh, need to be addressed appropriately. We have developed some technologies to take care of all these issues. And we have done extensive analysis and thermal storm. Uh, thermal instabilities. See, the solar energy is an intermediate in nature. It's available only during daytime, nighttime, uh, whenever we need it, we have to use it. So the storage uh, is uh, an option. When uh, we produce excess energy that is stored in a thermic uh, form or uh, thermal energy, and whenever it is needed, it, it can be given off center hours. This storage can be minimum of three hours to maximum of 16 hours. That depends on the cost competitiveness and other issues, storage materials. We are working on all types of solar energy storages. Uh, it is a, this energy storage is important to improve the reliability, uh, to take care of variable, uh, variable outputs. And also it uses uh, uh, buffering uh, to avoid transients because if uh, See, all of a sudden there's a cloud coverage and other problems. So in order to take care of transients, uh, we uh, should go for buffering. So this is very important. And uh, the solar energy solution for renewable energy system integration is very important. That can uh, uh, take care of reliability, capacity improvement, uh, minimizing the infrastructure and losses, large scale penetration of uh, these renewable energy system and uh, value source of uh, uh, value for energy storage is very important. There are various uh, options for energy storage here, but uh, I'm more interested in thermal energy storage here. And of course, there are wide ranges of energy storage depending upon the uh, capacity versus the discharge rates and so on. And uh, those include uh, um, uh, like conventional battery storages and then other uh, mechanical energy storage super capacity. And this molten salt is an important, hydrogen is another important source. And you can see that, as I mentioned, that 4D approach design is a research level, development, demonstration, deployment, and uh, scale of operation and commercialization. 
So this is the important thing. Some of these technologies are here at the uh, most important technology is thermal technology, which is a demonstration deployment scale, and it may reach to be a commercialization part. So therefore, they, they can be sensible energy storage or latent heat or thermochemical energy storage, depending upon the options. As you know, sensible is very important, uh, very simple and uh, easy to operate because the, it uses only sensible heat, which is uh, within the same phase, either it's uh, any one of the phases, single liquid, solid, and yes, yes, phase. But latent heat is another important option where uh, the energy is uh, convert, uh, uh, energy stored in the phase change conversion. So these are some of these options. And if you look at that, uh, uh, the power solar collector system uh, uh, requires this energy storage in order to operate. The storage is in the hot thermal uh, tanks. Uh, so. This uh, is very expensive because we have to operate 20, uh, 24 hours and uh, out of which almost two thirds is energy storage capacity. And uh, operating such two stage systems, you know, two tank system is very expensive. So therefore we attempted a single, we replaced this by a single storage tank, which we call thermal uh, storage, thermocline storage tank. The two stage uh, tanks have their, um, uh, distinct advantages and limitations, mainly the cost is a major issue, the significant cost is involved in this. So therefore, we are going for thermocline option, which is a single storage system. This single storage uh, is uh, an attractive option for energy storage. And if you look at that, this is a field and which gives the energy, uh, energy to the heat engine, but there's a storage. If you replace this by a single storage, it's called thermocline system. And it is uh, and the energy storage materials are used uh, both organic and inorganic, and uh, uh, mainly in a thermocline operation. I have listed out some of the storage mediums here. And how does it work? A single storage tank, and uh, during this store, uh, this is filled with the energy storage material in an encapsulated ma manner. It's a packed bed mode, and during the charging, the heat is transferred. From the top to bottom, and then it completely stored. And uh, off uh, during the night time, the flow is during the daytime. The flow is in this direction, and during discharging, the flow is in the opposite direction, like this here. Yeah. And uh, we built a, a large scale system and now CRC a classroom complex. Top of that, this is a massive system here with energy storage with the two. Uh, different uh, materials, both water as well as this uh, um, thermic fluid system, it's a water system. You can see that the filler materials, and I'm quickly give, giving the, how the filler materials are added in a composite layer more, and what is the computational domain here. I'm not going to emphasize because this is a, uh, a simple tank uh, system, it's a packed bed system, and with it's uh, numerically analyzed for optimizing conditions. These are governing equations, and uh, these uh, system uh, config uh, model has been validated with other models, and it up, uh, it up, it uh, is a good agreement or good uh, validity validation of the model, and so that we can implement for uh, the energy storage. So these are the various options with the single tank and multi-layer. Uh, uh, that bed options, and then of course a comprehensive comparative study between this has been carried out. And these are the charging and discharging characteristics. Uh, so in the beginning of that, uh, the, the, there's a, a, a small temperature gradient involved here. So uh, how the uh, thermocline moves from the top to bottom and during the, it's a thermocline behavior uh, uh, as it uh, during charging. And during discharging, how it moves up, and then the thermocline thickness plays a major role here. And uh, there are various parameters which influence the thermocline behavior, uh, mainly design parameters. Thickness of the uh, this thermocline will change as we charge and discharge here. And the other operating parameters mainly the working fluid um, flow rates in terms of uh, delta uh, velocity, inlet velocity of molten salt. Uh, if you go for higher velocities, 
higher uh, lower the thermocline uh, thickness and if you go for lower uh, velocities higher the thermocline thicknesses and uh, the operating uh, temperature is also an important it varies uh, with uh, this one and uh, it is found uh, when there is operating under the same temperature ranges tend to increase the delta t and of course uh, exergy destruction is uh, very high in entropy generation less than uh, delta t is 50 degrees celsius and so on. so these are some of the results which you can see for different cases here and it has been compared with the different output conditions and with the, for both single tank and uh, hybrid tank and for the same output also it has been compared you can see the variation with the capacity of the power output and uh, so therefore it's uh, uh, the delta t has a more impact on uh, discharge efficiency so therefore it's very important to consider this and then if you go for multi-layer uh, concept and we can use uh, see the, the temperature uh, gradients need to be stabilized. In order to stabilize these temperature gradients, we go for multi-layer, well, it's a hybrid mode like a phase change material as well as the sensible storage systems. And it has been compared how the axial temperature distribution uh, in the tank. See, you tank uh, uh, then, uh, axial distance is about 12 meters and uh, how the stratification takes place and what is the effect of, uh, uh, effect of, uh, effect of thermocline uh, thickness. Uh, these are shown here with that uh, temperature because uh, it, uh, you can see the, uh, along the, uh, the height, how with the time you can see how the charging and the charging behaviors and uh, how we introduce the TCM. If you introduce 20%, how it behaves and uh, what are the uh, transients in this, we can look at that. So uh, then the effect of TCM, uh, Width and other things, and the tank size plays a major role. But what is that aspect ratio, height to diameter ratio, is an important thing. Uh, so, therefore, if it's too uh, tall, or if the height is higher, then the stability problem. If it is too short, the temperature distribution problem. So, therefore, there uh, needs to be an optimal size of this. So, based on this optimal size, uh, we have uh, established uh, and demonstrated. With a different technology here. This is a linear rational reflector technology with solar energy uh, is reflected here. And you can see that this part, uh, how it looks like that. When the sun's rays comes and gets reflected, forms a line. And when you send the working fluid through this and it picks up heat and then becomes super interesting. So the again optical thermal analysis need to be done, and the receiver design is a very important in this case. See, based on that, we demonstrated, uh, deployed this in a school, uh, Patashala, uh, Kanchipuram. Uh, this is a JT Krishnamurti Foundation School, uh, a massive plant, and it captures the needs of the school uh, energy requirements. But in terms of electricity, uh, in terms of heat requirements for cooking and uh, uh, air conditioning applications. So this is a massive energy storage is installed here. And uh, the working fluid circulated that, and then it goes to here, and then the steam accumulator, and then it goes and it uh, goes to the power. So this is uh, this operates at 50 bar and 350 degrees Celsius, 350 to 400 degrees Celsius. And based on that, uh, in fact, we it's a one megawatt technology demonstration project. In a, this uh, was developed by one of our industrial associates, KG Design Services Limited at Coimbatore. They installed in their campus here this. And uh, the solar radiation uh, falls onto this and gets reflected onto the receiver. You can see here. And the working fluid is circulated, water is circulated. It goes like this and then comes back like this. And you can see here how the steam is produced. And that is, you can see here in, the, in this one, the superheated steam comes out with a massive thing. And this can be expanded on a turbine. And you can see that uh, the system uh, is a very massive system with respect to these buildings and as well as uh, uh, these uh, vehicles around that. You can see lots of massive system. And another technology is the dish technology, solar radiation. This is a mirror technology which reflects solar energy into this, uh, to the receiver, which is a boiler here. And uh, this requires two access tracking. 
and uh, the optical analysis is has been carried out and the design development activities has been, has been carried out. So you can see that there are uh, this cavity receiver plays a major role here, and uh, it operates a very high temperature uh, and up to 500 degrees Celsius. And uh, in superheated case and saturated case and some cold conditions, various application, uh, various uh, uh, levels of heat is used in various applications. Then the superheated case, saturated case, and sub cool case. And uh, the receiver design is important. Again, we carried out uh, numerical analysis for uh, heat transfer analysis and uh, with the different te techniques. And these are the receivers. And uh, under different uh, wind conditions, because it requires to access tracking and it kind of tracks continuously from the sun. So how uh, the receiver, because the receiver is important to absorb the solar energy. So it should absorb maximum amount of radiation with minimum losses. So therefore design of such system is very important. And we have extensively done at with different receivers uh, under different conditions. These are heat transfer characteristics you can see. And uh, it uh, varies the uh, uh, time to time, the orientation and sizes and so. So we have a look at how uh, the heat losses for, with the different uh, temperatures and different orientations here. Yeah. And uh, you can see these are temperature contours and velocity, velocity contours of the uh, receiver. And uh, it has been, uh, you can find out if you need more information, this is published, it is available in that how the superheated sub, uh, sub, uh, uh, saturated and subcold conditions, how it behaves. So then uh, we have to look at how the fluid is flowing. See, you have seen here the receiver. Uh, in this case, here, this is the receiver. And uh, this another modified receiver. The fluid enters at the bottom and leaves at the top. So therefore, you look at these uh, characteristics of this water fluid enters at the bottom here and it moves like this uh, spherically and then it goes helically it, it goes like that so it's a complex uh, boiler it's a monotube boiler uh, the liquid saturated uh, some cold liquid enters into the receiver and it comes out as a superheated liquid so these are some of the uh, characteristics of the fluid how the fluid swirls into the uh, receiver and comes out as a superheated exact monotube uh, supercritical boiler actually it's a, this is a supercritical boiler and they you don't know all the three phases exist but then when you are connected in series and parallel in a field uh, how it behaves is an important thing here so we need to come up with a, a complete field of a different uh, technology in different uh, systems see if this is not a single collector it is a made of several uh, collectors in a field uh, so, uh, thousands of such uh, dishes are connected series and parallel. When they are connected in series and parallel, then when they are located in some location, see, uh, uh, as you know that in solar systems, the land area is a, an important aspect because this is uh, area required for the total field is an important thing. So we have to optimize the land utilization. As a part of that, uh, we have carried out land utilization uh, optimal configuration of this. Suppose if you put in, in a field, uh, if you place a, a dish here, and there are eight dishes surrounded by that, and uh, this uh, uh, field configuration is different from uh, location to location, then the solar uh, energy is uh, falling onto this and converting into heat. And then, of course, from morning to evening operation, if there are two concentrators are placed one over the other, there's a possibility of a shadow of one on that. So it cast a shadow like this, depending upon that. And if you look, if you trace this shadow uh, through the entire year, it looks like this, how uh, the shadow of this concentrator falls onto the surrounding concentrators, depending upon the locations. So we have done extensive analysis for the entire country, India, uh, starting from Kanyakumari to the Ladakh region, uh, 35 degrees north of uh, uh, Northern Hemisphere. Uh, this is the latitude. So therefore, entire uh, country we have mapped and made an atlas for that for a, a standalone uh, solar power plants. And uh, we have come up with a viability option. Uh, wherever the green areas are there, it's viable, this technology. And blue areas are conditionally viable and red areas are not viable with this technology. So based on that, our technology we have given to the 
industries. Some industries are implemented in various places. This is a such system, scaled up version of our system, and they installed in Hyderabad, a pharmaceutical industry. This is in Chennai. It's uh, these uh, they have commercialized, used for processing and power generation. You can look at these are the, their brochures. So therefore, the energy storage and the energy conversion is very important for uh, standalone operation. I have uh, highlighted because time is uh, very short, so I have highlighted how storage plays a major role when we operate in an integrated mode and how uh, this integration is uh, uh, effective when we operate at uh, uh, integrated mode and uh, standalone mode. So I have shown some technologies. I have, I have mentioned already our approach is 4D approach with four E's and four T's. So therefore, with this uh, complete indigenous technology development uh, has been carried out and I have given you some glimpses. With this, I end, uh, uh, I conclude that, uh, that the optimization of energy system for sustainable development by analytical, numerical, and statistical tools are very important. The optimization of concentrating solar power uh, systems are very important uh, for mainly prediction of uh, heat transfer characteristics, the design of receivers, and uh, of course, uh, viable solar energy system for mainly process heat and power generation options. So the sustainable energy technologies through 4DC, that is a design, development, demonstration, deployment, and commercialization approach. As I mentioned, we have given, uh, licensed some of our technologies to the industries. So this is uh, the only solution for obtaining uh, sustainable energy solution. This is our uh, lab and this is my group. With this, uh, I end uh, my talk. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I as uh, I know some of you are uh, from IIT Madras, but this is my signature slide at the end. And uh, you know, uh, if you are not from IIT Madras and IIT Madras is, uh, we are living with these uh, friends. So you, uh, uh, you, if you have any, this my friend is looking eagerly to you for this, for questions. If you have any questions, please ask my friend and I'll answer on uh, her behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Reddy, for a nice informative talk. It was very informative. And then to give some scientific aspects also. So now, actually, it is open for discussion. Please type your questions in the question answer uh, that box. Then I'll read out to Professor Reddy, or he can also read out an answer. Uh, Professor Reddy? Yeah. This is SK Das. So, are you able to hear? Yes, sir. Please, please. please yeah. So, it is, you see, the mo major, you know, uh, thrust of your work, which is very, very important, that you are building systems. See, fundamentals of heat transfer we we all know there are lots to be done but it's more important to build systems which you are building now when you build system there is always a question of scalability right you have built big um, you know uh, uh, systems with the collectors parabolic trough and all that now the question is if we want to make it even bigger we want to make it megawatt level Right. How, you know, what kind of a scaling uh, difficulties may come? Okay. So, uh, in fact, uh, I have uh, mentioned that uh, in laboratory scale itself, we have a demonstration scale. So, as I mentioned, that this can be easily taken to the field and uh, implemented. That's why uh, it's not, uh, uh, not a, a tabletop system. It's a technology level system. Right. So, uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned that uh, earlier, the, these are three levels of uh, uh, the, uh, levels. One, the first level is a, a tabletop level and technology. Level. So, these three levels are uh, altogether a different ball game. It is uh, uh, when you are uh, when at the design level uh, we have several challenges. At the demonstration level, there are several challenges, and of course, implementation uh, in megawatt scales. 
So, uh, um, in fact, uh, uh, I am also involved in, uh, in, in, in Indian, some of these power uh, plants in a megawatt scales up to uh, five megawatts and so on. So, uh, the challenges there is a scale up operation and how to integrate them. See, uh, there is a limit for uh, size of an individual system. So, uh, because uh, this, this size depends on various other factors like uh, uh, the terrain and also the material and uh, the cost. Ultimately, the cost is important. So for uh, uh, eventually, the viability is a major uh, option, a ma major criteria uh, in order to uh, come up with a size. So uh, the, your question is, uh, when we go for a megawatt scale, what are the challenges? The challenges uh, is uh, an, uh, mainly the integration is a major challenge because uh, when we go for large scale power generation, the, uh, uh, the operating parameters, ensuring operating parameters are uh, very uh, challenging because of uh, the flow conditions, because you know that this is a massive field about if you take a, a 50 megawatt uh, um, system, each megawatt it requires about six acres of land and the entire field goes um, throughout this uh, about 100 to, uh, 100 to 500 acres of land. So in such case, uh, what happens is the heat losses are substantial and each loop we have to uh, run about a kilometer and then bring it back. And it operates uh, in open environment and with high pressure and high temperature. So leakages is another challenge. And then most, these are not static systems. They are, uh, uh, dynamic, dynamics, they are moving systems. It moves tracks from morning to evening. Then uh, during the tracking, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the giants, uh, because the fluid needs to also be oriented in, uh, as per the orientation of the collector. So therefore, uh, the, uh, the leakage is another challenge when we operate in a large scale system. And another major challenge in India is the dust. Uh, because you know that uh, our uh, environment is dusty environment, the dust accumulation is a major uh, problem when you go for large scale systems. So uh, you know that even uh, dust, uh, if you leave it for one week, the efficiency drops by 20%. Uh, so therefore, the cleaning is another uh, big challenge. So these are some of the challenges when you go for large scale power generation. Yeah, thank you very much. So there is uh, another question here <clears throat> by Mr. A.G. Joseph. So what will be the break-even period for a solar reflector system? So it, dif it differs from technology to technology because I have shown, uh, um, I think, four technologies here. And uh, the, because one is uh, whether it's, again, you know, that uh, exergy is, uh, uh, we do exergy analysis where uh, the quality of energy is an important factor. Whether you go, go for a high temperature complex system or whether you go for low temperature um, simple system. So in such case, generally we uh, go for a simple system, uh, in a cost effective system for process heat application. Whereas uh, a power generation we go for complex uh, expensive system. In such case, uh, the uh, break even is somewhere uh, uh, three to seven years, depending upon the technology. So the minimum is three years and maximum seven years. And it will run actually for how long? Uh, it's 20 to 25 years. With a reasonable efficiency, 20 to 25 years. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges in this uh, molten uh, salt uh, energy storage in this? Uh, molten salt uh, challenges. Uh, actually, molten salt is one of the uh, important uh, energy storage medium because uh, we uh, in fact studied up to 16 hours of storage because uh, if you run 24 hours, uh, you know that we consider eight hours is the uh, you know, solar energy availability. Remaining 16 hours we have to store we, if you want to make it 24 hours of operation. So therefore, the capacity factor is only 25 to 30 percent. We have to store energy almost 60 to 70 percent. Then, in such cases, the losses are substantial, especially in the 
night time and uh, then uh, storing about uh, um, uh, almost two thirds is a very challenging. So therefore, we have to identify the right material to store it. And the one of them is the molten salt because it can be used as a working fluid as, as well as the storage medium. So uh, uh, your question is, uh, uh, what is the uh, challenge? I mean, yeah. The challenge is, is uh, based, uh, yeah. because it's a phase change uh, system. Mm. So mm. therefore, what happens is uh, the uh, charging and discharging cycle and round round trip uh, round trip efficiency is a major challenge here to uh, uh, to get round trip consistent round trip efficiency. And uh, another important thing is a startup thing. See, initially we have to convert everything into liquid and then uh, run that uh, through the loops. So that is another challenge. So therefore, uh, startup relatively takes about half an hour to uh, one and a half hours. That's a major issues. Another question I had actually, what are the kind of actually, I mean, efficiency of those uh, receivers you talk about? Yeah, because see, I have, uh, uh, I have though in one of my slides, I mentioned the few different efficiencies for different uh, systems, but uh, since uh, the time is very limited, I just uh, okay. but I'll, I'll, I'll mention quickly. Yeah, yeah, I'll mention quickly. The highest, uh, highest efficiency is about 65%. Hmm. So, so uh, it's somewhere uh, minimum is 30% and maximum is 65%. Yes. See, now there is a talk about putting the solar collectors and solar photovoltaics on water bodies. You see, mm -hmm. something like I heard in Punjab because there are canals carrying water, right, for irrigation. Why don't you put the collectors on that canal? Okay. So, because that will, on one hand, reduce the evaporation of water from the canal. On the other hand, you, you are not using the land space. You are using the space which is anyway not used for anything. So what is your opinion about uh, using that? Yeah, nice. In fact, it's like a similar to offshore wind because the land becomes very expensive now and uh, utilizing, utilizing the resources is very important. This is a, what we call floating type of uh, systems. Uh, we have uh, one is uh, that uh, canal type roof, canal top is a fixed one, and the other one is the floating. Floating when we have water bodies, mainly reservoirs, uh, where we have uh, um, uh, less uh, currents like uh, waves, uh, amplitudes, there where these are advisable. Uh, the, this uh, It's a good, I think uh, what you mentioned is uh, it reduces the evaporation, not only evaporation, because most of you know that in India, another important uh, thing is atmospheric temperature. Our temperature goes up to 50 degrees. And when the atmospheric temperature is 50 and the solar panels uh, go up to even, I'm talking about PV panels, it goes up to uh, 80 to even 150 degrees Celsius. And generally most of these panels uh, are, uh, uh, they operate, they, they, uh, our standard output is at 25 degrees. Now you can see that if it operates at 70, 80 degrees, obviously the performance uh, reduces uh, substantially. So uh, it, uh, uh, these uh, floating type of uh, uh, plants not only reduces the evaporation, but also uh, it's good, uh, the, the, the temperature, operating temperature also is substantially reduced because of uh, uh, the cooler uh, medium around that. So, so the panels also operate at low temperature. That's why uh, the output all, uh, because of uh, low operating temperature, the output improves substantially. There's an uh, added advantage. So I strongly recommend, but there are other challenges like uh, how to bring the power uh, to the main land. Uh, but these are main, essentially meant for uh, uh, water bodies, not for, you know, we cannot you know, take it to the sea or ocean because there are other issues. And uh, then another issue is the, uh, marine and aquatic life, how uh, the impact of, we are also studying uh, how uh, the ecological and environmental impacts of these floating uh, systems. So there are some other uh, other issues, but uh, energy point of view, it's a re recommendable uh, option. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions?
I don't see any other question in the chat box. If we don't have any other question, let's thank Professor Reddy uh, for his talk. Thank you very much. Uh, with this, uh, we end this session, session one on day two. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and I wish all the best for the rest of the sessions. Yeah. So I'm leaving the session. Thank you. Thank you. A HMTC organizing team thanks Professor K. Srinivas Reddy for his insightful talk and Professor Shyama Prasad Das for chairing the session. We thank all the authors and audience for their participation. The session one officially ends now. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll just log out, Pravin, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So we can also go for lunch. Sure, sir. Do you have any, I mean, what time other session is starting? Two uh, o'clock. We have a break uh, till 3 p.m., sir. Uh, from 3 p.m., we start oral sessions. Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you.